All right. I guess I'll do a little test here and see if this uh, microphone works. I spent a fucking hour trying to make the microphone work. And it turns out like, it came with two little connectors with like 3.5 millimeter ends. And uh, it turns out there's two different types of fucking connectors and they don't both work. Anyway, hopefully it's working now. How could I be alive this long on earth and only now realize this? You know, it also means my other microphone probably isn't broken, uh, which is, at least that's good. They're both just cheap, shitty microphones, so. So here, let me, I'm gonna, I'll answer a couple of uh, questions from the, uh, from the post, from the thread. Um, <clears throat> And just see if the sounds good. Oh, I should have a joint. Okay, uh, Facebook. So yeah, I'll start at the top and answer some questions. From uh, Mike Gibson. Do you keep in touch with the boys? Corey, or anyone from the show? Just curious laugh out loud also second question if allowed lol would you consider the new jail series if they were to reach out to you about it well mike um i don't hang out with if, like with any of the guys outside of work except uh sometimes chipper the videographer but uh yeah we're not like i guess we're more professional colleagues than um than friends one would say, um, one could say, and uh, regarding the jail series, um, yeah, I was in the first season of it, and I expect I'll be in the second season. Um, it'd be nice to get like a more significant role. I know last year, or when they shot the first season, two in November, two years ago, like so, I guess a year and a half ago, they had a bunch more scenes scripted for me and Corey, but they didn't schedule. Corey to actually be here in Nova Scotia for some reason um, so a bunch of shit got cut and he was here for one day and so we just shot what we could and that was that which was unfortunate but uh, they're often pretty unorganized in the trailer park boys you know um, like whatever uh, production zone I mean they're also very organized at the same time like the, shit, the amount of shit they got to organize is beyond my ability to comprehend, but Nick Polda asks the best story about Philadelphia Collins um, best God, nothing comes to mind that's like the standout, the standout story, but uh, he was always a bit of a loose cannon on set like who kind of go off script and just start doing things and uh car the directors would you know have to try to like get him to uh just stay on stay on target stay on script I remember when we were shooting the ray's funeral scene in the last movie he was in an electric wheelchair and uh I don't think he really used one much, but he just, it, because the ground there was uneven, it was sort of hard, harder for him to walk, so that they had him in an electric chair, but he didn't know how to work the controls, so he was just like plowing fucking through like the scene uh, a bunch of times until finally, you know, God, it sucks recording outside. You know, it was nice when uh, there was less, more restrictions and less tourists down here. <laughs> Maybe that's not true. Um, anyway, yeah, it was awesome. He was a bit of like a lumbering maniac, but in the best possible way. I mean, obviously it worked out great for the show. Oh gosh, you know, if this microphone's working well, maybe it's catching more me and not the fucking cars going by because it's a sound person's nightmare. Um... Why are the cat's faces blurred out? Asks Callum Stevens. 
Um, I think that's just uh, some comedy gold. Like they gotta blur out brand names if they don't want to pay money to them, like to the chip companies and stuff. So I guess while they were blurring stuff, they just blurred out the cats. That that's my guess. Um, uh, excuse me. Justice Freed asks, "What was it like to work with the late great legendary John Dunsworth?" Um, well, Justice. It was awesome. Yeah, dude was a legend. Um, a living legend he was. And now, yeah, just a le not just a legend. He's a legend. Yeah, he, super gracious, super gregarious. Um, funny, bizarre. I used to wonder if he was drunk at times. He'd be so, like, getting into character or just being, like, an oddball. Like in the early years when I first was meeting him, um, but then yeah, I learned he didn't drink, and uh, yeah, he's total uh, total oddball indeed. It's fucking awesome. Uh, how did you end up on the show? Asks Eric Blackwood. Oh, and Jimmy Wallace uh, backs that question up. Well, Eric and Jimmy, uh, I was working in a bar in Halifax called the Marquee. I remember it was a busy night and there was someone trying to flag me down get my attention like someone who didn't work there on the other side of the bar I was like loading glasses into the dishwasher or wherever something like that and uh, I was just like, ignoring them at first and then finally um, you know told them like oh hey I can't serve you I'm just you know a busboy and they're like oh no no I, I work in the movies and we're shooting in background for this movie we need people who look like they're from the 70s to uh, you know, for this background scene, um, call this number. So I did, you know, went and worked my, that might have been my first day on set ever, basically. It was background for this movie, sorry, just let, letting the cars go by. <laughs> letting the, uh, it was, it's, it was called Scotland, PA, and it was Macbeth set in the 70s in the States, uh, starring Christopher Walken. Um, I've never actually seen the movie but anyway I look like I guess I had a 70s-ish hairdo enough um, and it, I was on that set and one of the makeup artists was Mike Clattenburg's uh, wife at the time Anne-Marie and so this would have been in 1999 when they were just like ramping up to make the first season and she knew they were looking for folks who look like sketchy dudes and uh, yeah I fit the bill and uh, the rest is history. Um, who has the smallest nipples? You know, my subconscious says Randy. I haven't, uh, consciously I haven't explored too closely, but we'll go with that. Ricky Hine, you perverted freak. So, okay, oh man, cars. Holy fuck. Three cars in a row? Four! Five! Jesus Christ. Um, this is a good test of this microphone. I guess what, what this microphone can do. It's also a nice evening, actually. Today kind of sucked. You know, maybe I'll try going to the backyard and filming some more and just hoping this works enough to actually use. If it doesn't, then I guess it's just all a big practice run. But here, I'm gonna answer another question now, then I'm gonna get my weed, and then we're gonna go out to the backyard where there's still some sun shining. Um, it's only 5.20 here, so uh, that's the plan. Carson McWatson would like to know, I've noticed a lot of recycled stage dressing, like the same lamp. Do you guys furnish each interior trailer shot from the same batch of furnishings, or do you have four to five ready to go trailers set up to film in? Gosh, yeah, there's a whole department that deals with um, like set decorations. You know, it's uh, 
maybe four or five people depending or three or four or two people depending I guess <laughs> um, big shout out to Nicole and uh, James Kennedy who were two of the many props folks um, but yeah they do an amazing job and they definitely reuse things normally like a trailer will be set up for a while so it would be a bit unusual to see the same lamp in two different trailers in the same season but that could happen like if they you know set up marguerite's trailer to shoot some stuff and then they're done with that and they had to set up some other trailer like you know a george green trailer for something then yeah theoretically they can they reuse the same lamp like they must have a whole warehouse full of stuff for uh doing set deck they do a really good job I'm, I'm always impressed you know shit looks lived in um Jobin McCartney asks uh don't you think it's kind of unsettling that at the end of one season can't remember which one at the top of my head you're dating Sarah then the next season came out you're banging Trinity and she was pregnant I've never seen this asked before, but I would like to know the answer. Kind of, um, so when, yeah, when season seven ended, I was, yeah, me and Sarah's characters were dating. And then after the hiatus of six years, when season eight came around, then, yeah, me and Trinity had, uh, like, I, I had knocked her up. And the age difference between Trinity and I is definitely, you know, raises some eyebrows, but uh, it is all scripted and, um, you know, shit happens. She, like, Trinity, uh, Gina was in her early 20s when, you know, season eight actually came around. And I would have been in my, like, about 40, I guess. So it is a pretty big age difference, but, uh, you know, I didn't write it and uh, yeah I don't find it too unsettling I guess or th or that big of a deal um, Jeff Stewart asks what is the most meaningful or memorable moment of the show whether it was humorous or serious Gosh, it like there's no super huge standout. You know, my first day on set in season one stands out a bit. Then I guess like it's sort of funny, weird, random things that happened. Um, like one time we were shooting a scene where Julian was put in handcuffs. I guess the cops came and the rest of the boys were in Ricky's trailer. It's in one of the like more recent seasons in the park. And uh, it was supposed to be a certain cop that was supposed to handcuff Julian, but then when the scene was being shot, like the cops kind of got, you know, whatever, shuffled around. And one of the other background cops just like figured they would put their cuffs on Julian because it was supposed to get done. And it turned out that those were actual real police cuffs and they, the props department didn't have a key. <laughs> so it was, uh, yeah, that was a big fuck up. Um, not surprising fuck up, considering, but uh, yeah, there was lots of, uh, well, there was frustration, there was laughter, and yeah, the RCMP had to be called to come and uh, let Julian out. <laughs> Turns out it's illegal to own police handcuffs. Um, Jesse Haddad, what was it like with Nathan McKinnon being around the set? Shit, man, you know, I don't really watch hockey, so I think maybe we were in the same scene. There was a little overlap. I remember there was a lot of, like, a lot of people were excited that he was going to be coming to set, but I don't even remember if I saw him or not, frankly. So I <laughs> hope that's not too disappointing. <laughs> uh, Nathan Brent asks, Do you always have exact lines, or were you told a general idea of what you're supposed to say and then just roll with it once the camera starts. I love the scenes with you and Phil Collins so much. Two of my favorite characters. It makes me sad. Phil and John are no longer around. 
Thanks for being so involved with the fans. Well, Nathan, you're welcome, bud. Um, yeah, everything is scripted. So by and large, things follow the script um, pretty closely. Uh, f at least for my stuff. Um, they do do you know multiple shots of each scene. And so sometimes they'll switch things up. Uh, the boys tend to do a lot of improvisation. Um, I don't do so much of that. Although if like, the lines don't feel natural, I'm allowed to change them. Usually it's not an issue. And sometimes, you know, actually I'm not a very good improviser. Like sometimes they tell me to improvise and I'll just like, you know, compared to the boys or, you know, like John or skilled actors, I, you know, I'm not necessarily, wasn't very good at that. I'm not very good at that. But who knows, you know, sometimes, sometimes, uh, you know, I can have a doozy. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I usually follow the script. Um, all right, Jeffrey McCara Turnbull asks, does the dude who played Thomas still work for the boys? Uh, yeah, Tom Collins. His name was uh, Mike. Shit, what's his fucking last name? I should know this. But yeah, he was um, a good is a good friend of Mike Clattenburg's and he was doing sound uh, for Trailer Park Boys for years. And uh, the way I understand it is that like Mike sort of, Mike Clattenburg made, uh, fuck, what's his name? Thomas Collins, Jesus Christ. Um, TPB Thomas Collins actor Mike O'Neill okay it is Mike so Mike Clattenburg Mike asked Mike or, uh, to do it or sort of convinced him to do it Mike Clattenburg got Mike O'Neill to do it um, mostly to see him um, uncomfortable and to sort of have a laugh uh, I've actually heard this theory applied to a lot of the Trailer Park Boys you know scenes and stuff um back in the old days especially sort of like Mike Clattenburg's pet project uh, fucking around with people and making them uh, uncomfortable or just you know putting them in a, in a in a situation that he finds amusing like often I would hear him or you'd hear hear, hear him laughing behind the monitor um, like while you're in a scene <laughs> you couldn't suppress it even which is cool you know fair enough good uh, good Good fun. Oh shit, where, uh, did I lose my Facebook? Oh man, I think I might have lost the sun. All right, I'll just keep sitting here answering more questions. Uh, actually, I might have to cut this. I think for some reason you can only record half an hour at a time with a Canon, like, point-and-shoot camera. Um, I don't know why they would do that, but I've only got a few minutes left here. You know, what I'll probably do is just finish recording this up to about half an hour, whenever it turns off, and then uh, upload this, and I'll do some more later. Um, i got to get on with my life. <laughs> I got, I mean, which is making dinner. Um, oh, there's another. Uh... So, yeah, no, he doesn't. So, in answer to your question, Jeff, Thomas doesn't still work with the boys. When Clattenburg and the other producers sold the show to the three main boys before season eight uh michael neal also left what's the funniest moment on set either on or off screen you have witnessed like another giant bunch of cars well so and another funny one was uh there was a scene where what the fuck
Um, there's a scene where uh, it was like some sort of barbecue scene. Everyone was there. I remember I was watching from Offset, but Lucy and Ricky were arguing, and uh, Lucy just like I think she has a burger and she takes a cheese slice off it maybe or oh she has a cheese slice and she just throws it behind her, and it whoosh, whoosh, lands on like Ricky's back and just sticks there. And it was totally unintentional. It wasn't scripted. And uh, everyone loved it. And so they tried to actually like do it again. I guess that take wasn't perfect for other reasons. So they were trying to uh, do it again. But they just couldn't like have her throw it so nonchalantly behind her. And have it actually like, you know, make contact in the right way. That was a, that was a funny time. <laughs> oh, what's her? All right, well, one more question. Adam Miglich. Adam asks, I know John Dunsworth didn't drink, but any of you other guys getting drunk and stoned for real on set? There was definitely folks who would get real stoned for their scenes. <coughs> Rock pile. <coughs> um, I was pretty nervous about doing that in the early years, but then, who knows, in later years it may have happened. I can't quite remember. Uh... But yeah, no one was obviously hammered or drinking on set. That would be like, that would be a no-no. But like, if as long as you could sort of function and weren't too stoned, uh, I mean, no one, ever, no one ever talked to me about it or the rock pile. Um, all right, cool. This is fun. This is part one. I've only got a few seconds left before this is going to turn off, I think. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And we'll take things up with part two soon. Jacob out.